Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we will be wrapping up our last SDL tutorial. I know, you guys are just sad about it. Um, our SDL Pong making game tutorial, I should be more specific. So what do we need? We need to keep track of the score. So we need two integers, int player score and AI score to see who's winning. And this game won't end once you hit a recent score. This game will just play forever. I just want to wrap it up as a simple like tech demo of the game. So let's update our player score and our AI score first since we added their integers first. In our logic, we have if the ball dot x becomes less than 2. If it goes to the player side, we need to increase the AI score. So we'll just do AI score plus equals 1. And then if it goes off the other side, the AI side, player score plus equals 1. And we need to initialize both these values as 0 up here. I'm sorry about that. Equals 0. So every time the ball goes off the left side of the screen, the AI gets a point. And every time it goes off the right side, the player gets a point. Now we need to display it. This is where things get not exactly tricky, but they just get silly in the amount of implementation. Um, so we need a TTF font, and we will call it times, because we are going to be using Times New Roman. So in our load game, we come down here to our, below our reset ball, and we will say times equals TTF load font. Is it TTF? load font I'm almost positive well I guess I forgot the function name so we'll just google it real quick and we need TTF load font how to install um, so SDL TTF load font wow this is getting a Roth a, a rocky start I should say so open font open font oh sorry so it's TTF open font and this takes the care file it's gonna be times dot TTF and our point size let's make it 14 14 is like a perfect size it's it's just bold enough to um, just big enough so you can see it but not too big where it's an intrusive so we opened our font so this is the font that's going to display the text so first things first, we need to get our our font into our Pong folder. So in the debug, I'm I have times.ttf in several places on this computer because of several different programming projects. It's just the font I use. So times.ttf I have here. You just Google times.ttf, you'll find it. Um, you, if you even just search for it on your computer right here, I'm sure you get 50 popping up because Times New Roman is, it's Times New Roman. It's one of the standard fonts that come with the package. So what do we need now? Well, our draw, we need to draw the score. And for this score, we need to draw, we need to have the, the locations of where we're going to draw um, each score. So we need two, two new SDL recs. SDL rec play score um, rec and AI score rec is what we're calling. So these are going to be used, these are going to be modified in our load game. And all we're going to do is just give them an X location and a Y location. So play score rec dot X, we're going to leave the Y's at 0, is going to equal 0, and our play score, our AI score rect, AI score rect dot X will equal, let's put it, well, let's put these both off by a margin of 50, and we'll put the other one off by a margin of 100. I, well, we'll do it 725. 725 is good. I can't imagine the text will expand more than 25 pixels unless the scores start getting really big in this game so we have that implemented so we have the plate the locations so every frame we need to draw our 
scores. So we need to create SDL surfaces for that. So SDL surface our player score our player score surface. This can be local equals TTF render. Now we won't we don't want to do that yet. We're gonna just do that later and that's wrong. That's spelled wrong. Um SDL surface and this isn't a draw screen function um, AI score surface and now we've set up those two surfaces and we'll just go to the draw function so SDL blit surface we're just gonna blit these to the screen we're gonna blint our player score surface which is empty right now to we, we have no clip for it, so no to our screen and that will be and it is it it is the player score rect which is where the location is for the for where we are drawing the text and then we'll do SDL blitz surface AI score surface no screen and AI score rect now this TTF is taking so many different variables. We need two more, two more, and that's where this is where crap is getting. Actually, three more. We need a color for the. We need a color for the text. And so for the text, we need an SDL color. Um, we'll make this pink. We'll make it pink. It's it's an SDL color. Now we can't use a color for the uh, UN32 white. We SDL colors and uint 32s aren't the same because the SDL render text will take a uint uh, a SDL color. Those other ones take uint 32s. And that's going to equal 255 0 255. A nice bright pink. And you're going to see me. These aren't brackets. These are curly braces. 255 0 255 from the curly brace will be pink. So we've set up our color pink. That's just within the initialization of the variable. And all these opened up. I don't like it. Must have been pressed something I pressed. So now that we have our color set up, we can we can we need to we need to make our scores into strings. Now in C sharp there are the standard two string functions, but in C we can't do that. We need to create a string scene. A string stream. So we need to include include and I'm sure there's a better way to do it, S stream. And we need under that using namespace std. So up here above our surface declaration, we need string stream p score and our string stream ai score. Unless those are player score ai a score. We'll just call it a score then. A score. P score and A score. Now we need to stream to P score our player score, our player score, and we need to stream to A score our AI score. So what these two lines of code do? We declare our string stream, and since you can't uh, just convert that to a string, you need to use a string stream. So we stream it to here. Now that we've streamed it to there, we can convert this to a string pretty easily. So with our SDL surface, player surface, we're just going to make it equal to TTF render text solid. And that's going to take, oh, render text underscore solid. And that's going to take our font, which will be times, our character will text, which will be P score, P score, which is a a string stream dot two dot str which converts it to a string and then since it's a string we can just put dot c str c string because since c since sdl is a c library it needs them in the form of a c string which is what that function does and then for our sdl color we'll just make it pink and we have rendered our text to an sdl surface that we can blend and then We'll do the same with our AI score. We'll do TTF render text solid 
times will pass. A score dot str dot c string. And then we'll just comma pink. All there and good to go. Now, when we play this, we got a player score wrecked. That's not real, apparently. Play score, play score wrecked. So, play score wrecked. I just, an AI score surface. It's AI score. We change that there. We compile it this time. And it works. But not truly yet. And now, I don't even want to run this because I don't want the memory leak to occur on my computer. Every time we render the text, it puts it into the SDL surface. And after this function is over, the surface isn't deleted. It's still there in our memory. We need to through that old surface or else we're going to get a memory leak. So you play this game for 20, 30 minutes. Suddenly, the file size is up to a gig. It crashes because it runs out of memory. So right after the flip screen, we're just going to SDL 3 surface our player score surface and it would be more optimized if we didn't declare these here or render them here but it's not a big deal or do these here but we'd have to make them global if we didn't and I didn't want to do that and so we're just SDL 3 surface our AI score surface and then F7 we compile this the memory leak chance is gone. We come here, run Pong. There's the two, the two scores getting displayed. And we forgot something fantastically awesome. We forgot to move the AI paddle. Our AI is not moving after a ball. I don't know how I could forget this. So this will be a long tutorial as I finish it up. So this is really simple actually. It's, it's just, it's amazingly simple. I love it. Of how because of how simple it is so every time we um, and our logic is where we're gonna make this move what do we want to happen with our ball we want the center of our AI paddle to move to the center of the towards the center of the ball so how can we do this well it'll be pretty easy so here we this is actually ball stuff we'll just put it above the ball stuff so it'll be if our AI paddle dot X plus 0 0.5 times AI paddle dot and actually we need Y it's these are Y's times half the player dot height is greater than the ball dot Y plus 0 0.5 times the ball dot height if our AI paddle plus half the height is greater than the, the ball dot y plus half the ball's height if the center of the AI paddle is greater than the center of the ball paddle all we're gonna do if it's greater than all we're gonna do is subtract one and we'll just copy this function we'll copy this if statement down control V it here and we'll just switch this around to a less than sign and we'll make this a plus equals one so that way the AI paddle moves just as fast as our our player paddle now one last thing we need to make sure our AI paddle doesn't go off the screen so we're just gonna copy the code that we used for the player paddle and just rename it to AI paddle so a AI paddle if the AI paddle dot Y is less than one AI paddle dot Y equals one and if the AI paddle paddle dot Y plus AI paddle dot H is greater than 599 AI paddle equals 559 plus AI paddle minus AI paddle dot height compile and run it and now our our simple AI is in for our paddle our our pong AI is implemented and now this game is just like regular pong it's almost impossible to lose unless you're me 
who somehow is horrendous at it. So there is our tutorial and I'm going to just go through and just say what we did in this tutorial because we did quite a bit. So in this tutorial, um, first thing we did was we included string stream. Well, we didn't do it first, but we included our string stream so we could stream our scores and convert them to strings which could be displayed as text. We scroll down even farther. We show that we implement, we added our score variables. We made a, a we declared a TTF font times for Times New Roman. We created rectangles of where we're gonna blit our our scores, where we're gonna blit the uh, scores, the uh, score surfaces, and we made the color pink for the text. In our load game, we loaded our font. We load, we opened our font and it was times.ttf at a font size of 14 and we set the, the locations of where the rectangles are going to be to set our cert, to set where um, to set where the text of the score would be drawn and our logic we scroll down here we made our AI paddle move to follow the ball made it center move to follow the ball center and we with these two if statements and we made sure the AI paddle stayed on the screen. Then, in our draw screen function, we created a string stream P score and A score, and we streamed the player score and the AI score to these two stream to these two uh, streams. And then we created an SDL player score surface and an AI score surface. And to these surfaces, we rendered our solid uh, we rendered solids text from the times font as P. To, of, uh, of our p score dot string dot to a c string which is what this function takes in the color pink same with our AI score in the times font a score dot to string dot to c string and with the color pink we blitted those surfaces to the screen we flipped our screen and then to prevent a memory leak we freed our surfaces and there's one more thing that I forget we need to free our font ttf closed font I'm gonna just assume what it is and we're gonna pass times to it so that way our font doesn't stay open after we've exited the application and I forgot to implement that to add that in the tour tour I'm sorry guys anyways there's what we did close the close the font after we were done and we quit the game here's our simple game loop look at how clean that main function is isn't that beautiful every game we load it and while the game's running if we quit we quit the game we do our logic draw the screen and then when we quit, we run the quit code. So this was the last tutorial for our C++ SDL Pong game. Uh, I hope you had as much fun as I did making it. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, when you like these videos, when they get viewed a lot, um, when you get, leave me nice positive comments, that inspires me and makes me keep wanting to make videos like this. I remember this was one that was suggested to me, so that's why I did it. So please like and comment. It's, it's really just what I like to have happen. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later. In the comment section down below, leave me a, a request for what game you'd like, to, uh, you'd like to have me make next time. Pong, as simple as a game it was, still came out to be how many lines of code? A total of 234 lines of code. With SDL, that's that, yeah, that was pretty hefty, you know. I think so. Probably about an hour, an hour and a half. Well, about forty-five minutes to an hour worth of tutorials, and I'm rambling on now. Anyways, leave down in the comment section below what tutorials you guys would like to see next. Up and coming, I'm gonna make a VB, uh, a VB net random numbers and a C++ random numbers tutorial. Um, that's kind of in here, but I want to make sure I do it as separate tutorials so people don't have to come watch this to see it. Anyways. Remember, one more time, like, comment, and subscribe. I really would love it if you did it. And I'll see you guys later.